It'll come back here and send it in. Then it'll go to here. Then it'll do a check to make sure that the time is right, which is two seconds to make the piston go. So did you get all that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it make the game work. <sighs> hey everyone, Utini here, and welcome to another episode of Game Design 101. This week, we're going to go over the game logic in our prototypes. Now, remember, last week, we learned how to create a gray box level of our game, and today, we're going to add the game logic to make the prototype work. This video will talk about gizmos and circuits, but we won't go into detail on them, focusing mainly only on game logic. But I have linked some great videos below to get you started on CV2, so please check them out. By the end of this video, we'll have a full playable prototype that players can test out. So let's get started. I mean, it's only logical. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, just, I'm so sorry. Okay, so here is my gray box from last week. Remember, the core mechanic is to stay in the light. So we have three distinct areas where we will test light mechanics. And I need to start to think about the game logic for how these mechanics will work. They are, one, a switch that will turn a light on and off, allowing us to move to the next section. Two, light that will turn on and off that the player will have to time correctly to maneuver through. Three, lastly, we have moving lights where the player will have to stay in them to move to a door that they unlock with a key. Let's go to light mode and turn on the gadgets so I can show you how these areas all work. First, I need to figure out how to know if a player is in the light or not. If they touch the darkness, they die and must try again. This can be accomplished using trigger volumes hooked up to respawn triggers. Second, I have to make a light toggle on and off to be able to cross through this small dark area at the beginning. We will make a toggle switch that will turn on the light and move the trigger volume out of the way with a piston. Third, for the last two areas, we have lights and triggers moving to a very specific timing. For this, I used the animation gizmo for the timing of all the triggers and lights. Here, the trigger volumes and lights move up and down, making the illusion that the lights are turning on and off. And in the third section, we have trigger zones with lights moving horizontally to give an ever-changing safe path to cross through to the door. And finally, there is a green block that when brought to the green door will open the door. This is done with the key block being tagged as key and the trigger volume on the door tagged to only interact with an object tagged key. Then we use a piston gizmo to open the door. Now remember, at this point, we still are focusing on quickly getting something up and running. As I go to my actual building, I'll start to optimize the way the game logic works and the way it's built. But for now, we want it quick and simple so we can make changes, which once you start testing, you will. So during my testing, I already found a couple things that needed changing. A few changes I made was I found my switch wasn't clear enough, so I made it just a basic toggle switch. I also found the trigger zones were a little too big, making it hard to get through the prototype. I found shrinking them down added a little forgiveness when going through and making the experience more enjoyable. Okay, so if you've been following along, you now should have a polished working prototype of your game. Now next week, we're going to talk about story and the player experience. I hope this video has helped, and remember to subscribe and hit the bell to see the rest of the series and come check out the creative community by joining the creative club. It's the best place to learn, grow, and get feedback on your game. So until then, see you in Rec Room, and OTD out! Okay. So the event receiver goes into this if chip, uh -huh. and it does a check to make sure that this is true. It'll then go back to here, then it'll also here, else it'll reset and make this turn into a check if this is true. Then it'll come back here and send it then. Then it'll go to here, then it'll do a check to make sure that the time is right, which is two seconds to make the piston go up and down. Then it'll send it into here, making the time zero, and then changing this to a true value. And then it'll send down to here, check if it's true or false. If it's true, it'll set the pistons, uh, piston distance to... If it's not true, then it'll set it back to its original position. Oh. Then it'll send a signal onto this, switching it to this other side. The other side will then do a check, and then it will repeat the process. Did you get all that?